Well, good afternoon and welcome to Bulldogs Behind the Scenes, where we delve into the people, places, and research connected to the University of Minnesota Duluth. Today, we're excited to explore what game day at Amsoil Arena looks like for the UMD hockey program. Before we begin, um, let's take a brief pause here to allow everyone to log in. Well, my name is Molly Clevin, and I'm part of the UMD Alumni Relations team. Today, we have the pleasure of taking a behind the scenes look of game day at Amsoil, led by Deputy Director of Athletics, Brian Nystrom. Before we begin, I'd like to highlight some of our past programs. We have explored places such as the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum, Amsoil Arena, the Superior Hiking Trail, the proposed UMD Sales Center, the UMD Chocolate Lab, Romano Gym, and many more. You can access all of these events on demand on our website at d.umn.edu backslash alumni. Today's webinar is being recorded and will be available on our alumni relations website. You'll receive a link with, in the email once that is ready. We will also have time at the end of the presentation to answer your live questions. To submit a question, please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Brian Nystrom. Brian is in his 13th year with the UMD Athletic Department staff and currently serves as the Deputy Director of Athletics. Nystrom oversees the Bulldogs annual revenues, corporate sponsorship, branding, events, marketing and promotions, communications, and creative services, while serving as the sport administrator for the Bulldog baseball and men's and women's basketball programs. It is now my pleasure to hand it over to Brian. Thanks, Molly. Uh, welcome, everybody. I uh, appreciate everybody taking a little bit of time over lunch here to learn a little bit about uh, Bulldogs behind the scenes for our UMD uh, hockey programs. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Molly and the alumni relations staff for putting this all together and getting everything ready to organize today's presentation and, and setting everything up. Uh, so before I get into a little bit about uh, a little bit behind the scenes, uh, I'd like to give a little background on uh, myself as well as our athletic department for those that may or may not be familiar with with UMD Athletics. Uh, as Molly said, I'm the Deputy Director of Athletics uh, here at UMD. Uh, I have been here for 14 years. I started in 2011. Uh, I got here a few months after our men's hockey team was fortunate enough to claim their first uh, national championship. And so there was a lot of excitement this my first summer here, and that has continued ever since with all of our uh, athletic programs on the men's and women's side uh, over the last 14 years. Uh, my main role has been on the has been externally focused and external relations, uh, as Molly mentioned, with uh, oversight of our communications team, our video production team, event management, marketing and promotions, as well as all our corporate sponsorships and advertising for our athletic department. And in part of my role, I work really closely with the AMZO Arena and the deck staff, uh, specifically for behind the scenes and UMD hockey game day setup uh, for our partnership that we have with our men's and women's hockey programs. Uh, one little fun tidbit I, I did before I kind of started this presentation is, you know, over my 14 years, um, I've been involved with over a thousand UMD athletic home events that we've put on and uh, over 500 uh, hockey games between our men's and women's hockey teams over the years. So I've uh, definitely seen a lot and have prepared a lot good and bad over the years, uh, but uh, it's been an exciting time to help support our hockey programs and have that partnership with the deck and AMSO arena. So a little bit about UMD Athletics. Uh, we have 16 sports, uh, 14 are NCAA Division II, and two are NCAA Division I with our men's and women's hockey programs. Uh, we are unique. We are part of three different conferences, the NSIC, the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference, the WCHA, the Western uh, Hockey Collegiate Association and the NCHC, uh, National Collegiate Hockey Conference. Uh, over the course of UMD Athletics, we have 10 team national titles, uh, two in football, uh, three in men's hockey, and five in UMD women's hockey, and nine individual national championships. Uh, the classroom competition community is something that uh, we 
consider a mantra of UMD athletics. Uh, we, you know, strive to reach excellence in all three of these areas. And I truly believe that uh, from a division two uh, department overall, um, when you add all three of those elements together, we are one of the most successful division two programs and departments in the country. When you talk about uh, how our student athletes uh, perform in the classroom, also compete on the court uh, field, um, et cetera, but also engage in the community and give back and have a, a bunch of great community relations and community partnerships. So now for a little bit of more of the, the fun, some video clips, and uh, I'm going to kind of walk through a little bit about what it takes to put on an event at Amsoil Arena for our hockey programs. But uh, before we kind of get started, we did this video here I'm about ready to show and walk through a couple of years ago, um, an FPV, a first person point of view uh, drone video, if you may, some of you may or may not have seen it, uh, that just kind of walks uh, and flies through the arena as a whole, but then also highlights all our team space. Uh, it's pretty quick, so I'll try to touch on a little, uh, little bit bit as we go through, but then uh, we'll have some uh, segmented video clips in the in the following slides uh, from a game day perspective to be able to walk through a little bit of what uh, game day looks like uh, for UMD hockey. Uh, so as we head into AMSO Arena here, uh, AMSO Arena uh, for us, 6,756 is technically what we determine as a sellout. We definitely uh, continue to sell tickets and have has had crowds over 7,000. Uh, but that's the number we use for uh, technically a sellout at Amsoil. As you can see, the banners there, home to obviously, as I mentioned, three men's hockey national championships, five women's, uh, as well as six Hobie Baker winners, which is the most in college hockey. And most recently, uh, Gabby Hughes, a women's hockey alumni, captured the Hockey Humanitarian Award, uh, which was given out across all divisions, men and women uh, in collegiate hockey. As we head down the concourse here, um, past the press box, uh, an area that highlights a lot of our uh, UMD accomplishments over the years with NCAA uh, tournament appearances, All-Americans, Olympians, uh, and our Hobie Baker winner. As we head back into the, the main arena, the bowl, one exciting piece that we're looking forward to this year, as you can see the center hung video board there, um, right above Champ on the ice is that video board. We've worked closely with the deck and the deck has been great to uh, proceed with the process to get that replaced um, come December, which will have one of the highest resolutions of a video board in the state of Minnesota. So super excited about that for our fans come January. So we head down the tunnel here into our athletic training space. Uh, we have a men's side and a women's side. And in between, we have uh, warm tubs, cold tubs. Um, a unique fact there is there's an underwater treadmill in the cold tub for rehabilitation for leg injuries uh, for our student athletes. As we head around the corner on the left side, we'll head into our women's hockey locker room. Um, so the women's side uh, is kind of all housed on one side behind the scenes, and the opposite side of the UMD team space uh, houses a lot of the men's side and then into the sports performance center. So you can see the locker room here. Uh, both locker rooms are very similar. Uh, nice wood lockers, saunas, uh, restrooms, and a separate area for dry clothes to keep their um, shoes and regular clothes before they change into their workout in their hockey gear. So we head down uh, the end of the hallway here. This is our women's hockey players lounge. Uh, great space, uh, lounging area, a place to study, a place to have team meetings, team meals, uh, championship displays, full kitchenette, uh, really kind of a home away from home uh, for our UMD student athletes when they're at the rink between practice, meetings, et cetera. As we fly down the hallway here, uh, towards the main entrance uh, for our coaches and our student athletes. This is an area that we remodeled uh, a few years ago to give it a more modern, sleek look as you enter. Um, down this hallway on the left side here, it will kind of direct us path past, or excuse me, past our men's coach's office into the men's hockey players lounge. So again, very similar full kitchenette, uh, chairs, tables, et cetera. Uh, really neat uh, UMD Bulldogs in the NHL display above the TV there for all our players and student athletes that have uh, been a part of the hockey program that have gone on to play in the NHL. We head into our sports performance center um, at Amsoil Arena. Uh, so it's, again, weightlifting equipment, full racks uh, for strength and conditioning, uh, bikes, treadmills, and a great turf space. So our student athletes really can go from practice to strength and conditioning, pre, post game uh, workouts, et cetera. And they really never have to leave the rink, uh, which is a, a really a great asset for our hockey programs. 
as we slide into the men's hockey locker room, again, a dry area for their chain to change and keep their clothes and belongings before they head into the locker room. And you see, we kind of have, this is, would be like a game day setup that our equipment staff would uh, set up for our hockey teams. Uh, they also have video capability in both men's and women's hockey locker rooms to watch film uh, pregame uh, for meetings, but also they utilize it during intermissions as well to maybe check out some plays and watch some videos uh, during the course of the game that they, they found valuable uh, as they move through. So that's a little bit of a, a highlight of um, the arena as a whole. Before I take you through a few clips of uh, what game day looks like, uh, I think it's good to just take a step back of kind of what a, a normal week looks like on our end from UMD Athletics of how we prep for maybe a Friday game that's a 707 puck drop for our men's and women's hockey program. So on Monday, uh, it really starts with a lot of internal staff meetings from behind the scenes. So as we mentioned before, our ticket operation department, our marketing department, our video production and communication team. Uh, we have full-time staff member in each one of those areas uh, that work in directly with myself. And as a group and as a team, we meet internally on Monday to really walk through, hey, what's the game plan for the week? What's things and items that have come up? What do we have planned, whether it's marketing and promotion, if it's a post-game skate or autograph session, what we may have planned for that Friday evening game or any other special events, uh, ticket specials, et cetera. So once we make sure that we're all on the same page and we're working as a cohesive unit, we then begin a, a, from my, on my end, a lot of, a lot of email uh, communication is pretty heavy on Mondays. We'll put together emails to send out to our chancellor's office. So our senior leadership on campus has an idea of what's happening uh, that weekend uh, down at AMSO arena an email that's pretty detailed to the deck and the AMSO arena staff as far as our needs for setup, uh, promotions, ticket operations, etc. Uh, we also send an email to our UMD hockey staff to make sure that they are aware, uh, coaches, uh, for as they have press conferences and our student athletes as they prepare for the week, if they get asked questions, they, they're in the loop. And then we do a lot of other internal emails with our student workers who are at the game, our part-time staff, as well as our external partnerships with corporate sponsorships, uh, suite holders, uh, emailing our student season ticket holders, as well as organizing uh, any parking logistics with the arena and communicating with uh, Minnesota coaches who uh, is our bus provider to get students from campus uh, down to the arena. So it's a lot of prep and planning uh, and, and communication between a lot of different parties on Monday. We would then head into Tuesday, uh, which is really heavily focused on the creation of our game scripts is what they call them. And our game script is really a 15 to 16 page uh, document uh, that highlights everything from when we start the clock 90 minutes before puck drop all the way until the horn buzzes at hopefully a, a bulldog victory. And that game script really highlights, you know, when do doors open, when do teams go out on the ice, uh, when do lights go down for uh, pregame introductions, when do lights come back up, uh, when does the band play, when does the music, uh, who's putting what on the video board during a timeout, uh, when is the Zambonis coming out, and just highlights everything that we would follow along from a, great, a game script uh, for a game. We work closely with our video production staff on Tuesdays uh, to make sure all our graphics for our in-game video board is set and ready to go, as well as our in-venue uh, television broadcast. That's one piece that uh, I'm really proud of it over my time here is we're really involved with our online stream and our television broadcast with our partner with My9 Sports. And uh, our director of Bulldog Productions and our student staff uh, are really the key cogs in that wheel and help design everything from the score bug that you would see that shows the team and opponents up in the corner of the screen as you're watching the games to our students who are operating cameras and doing replays and doing short features during intermissions or commercials. And we're really heavily involved in that online broadcast uh, overall. Uh, it is a lot of work uh, over the last number of years, but it's it's something that has really highlighted our brand and our, and our student athlete stories and hopefully has elevated um, the quality of broadcast over the last number of years. Uh, we will meet with our television uh, partner to go over the TV rundown of items, as well as our communication staff it really sets up their plans for the week with game notes, uh, press conferences, releases throughout throughout the week. Uh, on Wednesday, uh, we host our weekly press conferences down at AMZO Arena for our men's and women's hockey programs. And then I, for me personally, I will spend a lot of my time on Wednesday afternoons into Thursday uh, at the arena, making sure everything is set up from an in-venue standpoint with our video board and our production and our music, but also doing an event walkthrough with any arena staff uh, and making sure we have everything set up that we need uh, as we head into Friday. 
on Thursday, we'll be down at the rink a little bit at Amsoil doing final prep. Uh, and then on campus, we'll be printing off our final elements of signage, whether that's locker room signs, uh, uh, elements for our marketing promotions or sponsorship or other game day needs uh, to have that all prepped and ready to go. We communicate with the officials uh, that are coming into town to ref either the men's or women's games. And so we'll send them an email as far as their locker room assignments, uh, parking, uh, meals, game day logistics, and anything else that we need to communicate with them. And then our hockey operations uh, staff on our men's and women's team will prep uh, for the arrival of the visiting teams. And so each team usually arrives on Thursday. And so we work with AMSO Arena to block out some ice time per conference bylaws. So the team visiting teams coming in will skate uh, on AMSO Arena's ice the day before the game. And so we just have to map out that schedule to be able to provide them the appropriate ice time on Thursday. And then usually there's some pregame skates on Friday. And on Friday, it's kind of our final preparations and last minute ticket requests and details. And depending on the opponent and um, the interest in the game, it can be extremely busy on Friday doing last minute details, or it can be a little lighter if it's a, a lighter crowd expected, or if it's a break game when students are off off uh, off from school and um, they wouldn't be in attendance. And then we get to the arena and we we set up and we we execute the event and try to have uh, the best experience possible uh, for fans who are attending. This is a little bit of a game day timeline uh, on the right there it might be a little small, but um, it's it's really our item that we print out and we hand to the officials and uh, the visiting team, our home team and every everybody um, that is working the event uh, can take a look at that to know that, hey, once the clock starts at 90 minutes and it's a countdown to puck drop. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, when are doors opening? Um, when do teams take the ice? Uh, when do we turn the lights on? Uh, TV timeout protocol, intermission length, uh, what's the overtime protocol if it's conference, non-conference, postseason, et cetera. And so that's kind of our, our short little um, snippet of a game day that we provide to a lot of different parties who are, are working the game or have a, uh, an involvement uh, for a hockey game day at AMSO Arena. On the left side, I'm going to take you through on the next slides as far as kind of more of what uh, my day looks like uh, from a staffing perspective at AMZO Arena for a 707 puck drop. And so I will usually arrive at the arena from a behind the scenes standpoint around 4.30. Uh, my first 15 or 20 minutes will be a lot of arena setup, making sure, hey, table needs and requests are in the right place. Do we have uh, right now we have a clothing drive going on with our student athlete uh, diversity, equity, inclusion group. So do we have that set up and in place um, and just making sure the arena is ready to go for a hockey game day? Uh, and then it proceeds with a, with a lot of behind the scenes meetings at five o'clock. We'll meet with our UMD uh, game day staff uh, that has arrived from UMD side with student workers full time and part time. At 5.15, I uh, usually do a suite walkthrough on the suite level to make sure the, the suites are being prepared and set up from the arena staff. And if there's any extras that I need to connect with them uh, as far as any game day suites sold or any special requests. At 5.30, uh, I will meet with the deck guest services staff, which I'll talk through a little bit uh, on a few slides. At 4, 5.45, I'll pop down to our UMD production staff to, to join that meeting to really go over our game day script, as I mentioned earlier, that 15, 16 page document uh, with our, our camera crew, our replay operators, our audio technicians, our, our staff that is operating the video board uh, on game day to make sure that everybody's ready to go from a exp uh, fan experience standpoint, but also if there's anything that we need to execute from a sponsorship or an advertising uh, perspective uh, as we get uh, closer to puck drop. At uh, six o'clock, we'll confirm with the deck staff that everybody's ready to go and that we can open up doors. We usually do this a little bit earlier for students to get them in. But at six o'clock, we uh, connect with the guest services staff to kind of give the all call that uh, doors are ready to be opened. From 6 to 6.30, uh, we'll, I'll check in with staff to make sure that operations are running smoothly and um, and check in with different departments. At 6.30, uh, I'll head back to the press box where our production area is housed, which we'll show you in a few slides, uh, to kind of get ready for um, pregame warmups for both teams. And then at 6.45, it's kind of our final check-in with game day staff uh, and secure lighting in the arena. Uh, the lighting in AMZO Arena isn't lights that you can flip off and off like your living room or your office at home. Uh, once we dim them, they take 15 to 20 minutes to cool down and then warm back up. And so that's why we are usually dimming lights after warmups if you've been to a game. Uh, we'll drop lights a little bit and then it gets ready for kind of our pregame show at 6.55 with... Um, video highlights on the video board, et cetera, before the team hits the ice. At seven o'clock, I'll check in with our TV partners to make sure the broadcast is out uh, on TV as well as online. 
And then at 7.05, I'll usually hit the lights to kind of turn those on because they take two or three minutes to warm back up. So by puck drop, uh, the lights are, are fully fully operable um, for the TV broadcast and for um, the home and visiting team uh, as they drop the puck at 7.07. Once the game begins, I'll rotate between the press box, production suite, um, our game day staff, the deck staff suites, officials, and other operations, and really just making sure everything is going smoothly um, and being a conduit between our athletic department and the arena staff to make sure that uh, things are running smoothly, but also troubleshooting anything that pops up throughout the game as uh live events and when you have six seven thousand people in a building and a lot of technology involved there's usually always something that maybe um that can that can go wrong at any given moment so uh from an arena setup standpoint as we kind of flew through our back end of our locker room space earlier uh from the back end in the team space from umd side uh, a lot of the back end uh assistance for visiting teams or our team uh is something that our hockey programs do so for a men's or women's home game our UMD men's women's hockey staffs would be responsible for, um, you know, obviously their, their back end. So uh, athletic training, sports medicine, locker room setup, uh, pucks for warmups, uh, pucks for the game, uh, communicating a lot with the visiting team, making sure that they're all set up with the locker room, providing uh, skate sharpeners or towels or additional um, sports medicine needs, or just uh equipment team operations if a team's flying sometimes they don't travel with certain equipment just be just because it, you know they don't want to ship it on a plane um and we'll help provide that to them really cool piece right there uh that big bulldog head outside of the women's hockey locker room uh that used to be on the ceiling of the women's hockey locker room and a number of years ago we took it off the ceiling and we added it to the wall as kind of a focal piece for the women's program as you enter and exit uh their locker room area you can see the hallway here, obviously, jersey prep, game prep, et cetera. Um, a really cool piece is our equipment room right here. And uh, for skate sharpening, blades, et cetera, is directly behind our team bench. And so during the course of a game, if uh, a student athlete loses a blade uh, on their skate or needs something sharpened or uh, a stick breaks and we don't have it on the bench, they have access immediately behind them uh, to grab that, get it taken care of, and to make sure that that student athlete has the ability to get back on the ice when they need to. Um, again, you can see the arena pregame um, with some shots and the video board that we're really excited about getting some updates come January. So hopefully the first series in January when fans are able to come back, they'll see um, a really cool piece of uh, the clarity and the quality of video that's shown on that will be will be top notch. So the next item that I mentioned earlier was our game day staff meeting. So from the UMD side, we have uh, four to five full-time staff members that are at uh, any given home game for UMD men's and women's hockey uh, that oversee the various areas that I mentioned earlier, tickets, marketing, uh, production, communications. And the remaining staff that we hire is uh, mostly student workers, uh, students who attend UMD uh, that are working on a communications team for statistics or live stats, uh, working with our production team for cameras and replay or music uh, or operating the video board or our ticket staff who's helping sell tickets or work will call or the visiting team tickets uh, as their fans arrive. And then we have a, a few um, part-time hired staff that that come and work games, such as our our PA announcer, our our scoreboard clock operator, um, some penalty box workers, and, and a few others. But uh, for the most part, uh, it's all a, a small amount of full-time people, and, and the rest is uh, student workers that we rely on heavily uh, at UMD to re to really put on an event um, as as we go out throughout the year uh, for UMD men's women's hockey games. As I mentioned before, we'll do a walkthrough for the suite area. And so this is a little slower shot. You can see a couple of our staff members right there getting some of the, the suites set and ready. And so there's 15 suites at Amsoil Arena. Uh, 13 of them are sold on annual basis uh, for companies. And then the remaining two, one is owned by the deck uh, in the arena. And then one is uh, owned by uh, UMD as a whole. The UMD suite is one that we sell on an individual game basis. And so there's usually different companies and different groups that are hosting in that space uh, each single game. And so that's where I'll re really stop in to check in with that group, make sure their food and beverage is set up that they ordered ahead of time, uh, making sure if we have any giveaways on game days, we have those set up in the suites. Uh, those two individuals I mentioned earlier were walking through the suites to put uh, line charts in every suite uh, to provide a little extra uh, bonus uh, for being in a suite, as you see there on the counter. So they, they're
access to a suite holder bar and lounge um, on the suite level specifically uh, on game day. Uh, so we're, it's very fortunate as part of this arena to have, you know, these 15 suites, as you can see this one right at center ice and, and you see all the, obviously the history of the banners and the success over the years of both programs. The next meeting, uh, which is one of the most important meetings that we'll have uh, on a game day for AMS Arena is to meet with the DEC guest services staff. And so this involves most all of DEC's part-time part workers, uh, as well as a few full-time workers that they have uh, at their game. And so it'll involve all the ushers, it'll involve security staff, uh, ticket takers, uh, ticket scanners, uh, as well as some folks from concessions uh, and suite operations. And so I will meet with them uh, before every game and we meet as a group and it's probably a group of 25 or 30 depending on the game and really just walk them through hey what's happening tonight you know is there a puck drop is there a giveaway item uh, is there a special recognition during intermissions uh, what's the attendance look like uh, our students our students here are are we getting to standing room making sure everybody's aware of where standing room is uh, what happens if there's an emergency you know we've unfortunately have people when you're at a hockey game might get hit by a puck uh you know who's taking responsibility where do they go uh and kind of following those those protocols because it, it's really important for us to communicate with their staff because as i mentioned before we have a, a few full-time staff members and a lot of students that are attending games from umd side uh, but the main bulk of employees and staff is is operated from the deck from those 25 or 30 that are doing tickets and uh, ushering and security to the volunteer program they have that it's operating with uh, part-time employees for concessions um, in the bar area. And so being uh, on the same page with them is extremely important. Uh, it, it, we want to have the best experience for everybody involved and anybody that's attended the game. For the most time, you may never interact with the actual UMD staff member. Uh, when you get to the game, the first folks that you normally interact with from a fan experience standpoint is is parking services, which is operated by the deck. And then you head inside and you either buy a ticket or get your ticket scanned, which is a, a deck staff member. And then you head to your seat and you may interact with an usher or head to the concession stand and all those individuals are hired uh, by the arena. And so it's really important that they 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 have an idea of what we expect, uh, what we have going on, and we try to communicate as much as we can. Uh, now, we can't communicate everything all the time, and so some things we just have to troubleshoot as we go along. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it's really important to to be on the same page and, and make sure everybody is um, putting their best foot forward to, to have the best experience possible for those who are um, in attendance. As I mentioned before, our uh, Production room. This is a little snippet. Um, you can see me standing there of our production room. It's open to the arena. It houses all our technology and equipment next to the press box on game day. And so in there we have our audio engineer who's running music for the game, our, our student who's operating the video board. Uh, we have replay technicians um, that are operating what's shown on the board as well as any of the replays. Uh, the conference uh, replay system is in there. And so we have a representative from either WCSA or NCHC who is in that booth doing official replay. And so the camera angle uh, for the officials if they were to review a goal or a penalty um, throughout the game. And so everything is kind of interconnected through there. Um, and then we have a separate replay system of another uh, eight cameras. So on any, any individual game, um, we may have 12 or 14 cameras in the in the rink uh, that are feeding into different operations uh, for either video board operations and experience or official replay, along with uh, mics on the glass, referee mics that uh, seem to always give us troubles throughout the years um, during the game. And so there's just a lot of technology. Um, and with technology, obviously, can come issues with technology failing. And so troubleshooting that on troubleshooting that on game day and, and trying to figure out, hey, if something goes down, how do we how do we solve this? Um, and a lot of that is put on uh, UMD and our staff. And then we can reach out to the deck staff if, if it's something that's a little out of our control on game day. The next slide here. Um, obviously when doors open, as I talked about, we really communicate with the deck to make sure that everybody's prepared and ready before doors open. Uh, we don't want to open doors before we're not ready um, or their staff's not ready. You can see the student line here. We really work with them to get the students in a little earlier, especially um, if there's something else in Symphony Hall that evening that we want to clear that space for the next event that's happening. Uh, but we'll get them in um, and then we'll head to the main entrance to make sure that uh, it is all ready. So depending on the game and the AMSO Arena Ice Q 
YouTube lobby. Uh, it may be a, a pack game if we're doing a giveaway or something, a bobblehead or a hat or whatever it may be, or um, the opponent. Maybe we're playing, you know, a rival like Minnesota, North Dakota, and fans are eager to get in the arena, uh, grab something to eat, grab a drink, and head to their seats. And so we try to make sure everybody's prepared um, before they enter the arena, and then we funnel folks through as quickly as we can uh, to get them into the game. So as, as we as we go through the evening, it's a lot of staff check-in and arena prep, as I mentioned, a lot of these areas before. Uh, we really segment the areas uh, to give oversight from our full-time staff to to really manage these these certain areas uh, and of our department on game days because uh, it's, it's a team effort and no one person can do it. I walked through a little bit about what I do on game day, but it, it's really a team effort with, uh, with all our staff at UMD as well as our uh, men's women's hockey coaches and uh, operation and sports medicine staff. And so we really have, you know, our events and marketing staff will we'll take care of all their needs, our communication staff, our production staff, our ticket office. I'll work directly with our ice maintenance staff. And so I will email them each week of what's happening. Uh, we have a group, a student group on campus that we work with that comes down and helps um, clean the ice during TV timeouts. Uh, so it gets some of the snow and built up ice at men's game off the ice, which is a something we're mandated to do from the NCHC conference. And so we'll work with them to make sure we have the appropriate staff in place and everybody knows where to go, their locker room, their setup, uh, et cetera. Uh, we work with obviously our UMD PD on campus to schedule officers to help with our with our crowd and, and student section, as well as the deck security and the deck also contracts out to the Duluth Police Department just based on crowd size and requirements for fire code uh, and et cetera. We also have other groups that attend the game from UMD. Our UMD hockey cheer team and our, our great pep band uh, that provides great energy at games. And so I will be the direct source of contact with them during the week. And then once they get to the game, uh, educating them on what what do we have? What are their needs? Uh, they do a, a really cool walk before the game around the concourse if you've ever been there pregame. So it's making sure that everybody's ready for that. And we lower music when they're ready to go. And um they're comfortable with, hey, are they performing the anthem or is there any other special recognitions that we need to do throughout the game that either the cheer or band need to be aware of, uh, as well as I mentioned earlier, the ushers. Uh, so it's a great group that I meet with before the game. Um, and, and they're really the eyes and ears throughout the game. And they're able to provide feedback to me post game and then our pregame meeting the following game to, to really understand, hey, what are they hearing? Is there a section that's cold and drafty that we can address? Is there a section that the audio is not working very well or sounds muffled? And we're constantly trying to take that feedback and and either if it's something UMD can do and fix, great. If it's something that we can provide to the deck to try to, to try to you know rectify that situation uh, before the next game. And then uh, pregame, uh, which is always a fun piece. As you see, the lights are dim, pregame show, our you know pump-up video before starting lineups. One cool piece, you see all the lights kind of strobing around the arena, the bulldog heads on the ice. Uh, so we actually have UMD is installed. Uh, right now we have eight different lights. We call them gobo lights or cyber lights that are mounted on the rafters of the catwalk. And there's actually a program uh, that is um, that we have somebody come down and set up for us. And there's actually eight different elements as part of the game. And so when we first dip the lights down, there might be slow yellow lights going around. Then we play a video. It might pick up a little bit. When the team hits the ice, we have bulldog heads flashing on the ice and then other lights in different colors just to add to the experience and and set the stage for puck drop. And so we actually have a, a student uh, from UMD that we, we train in on game days. They sit there in the production room and they are able to click the right button to get the lights to turn on at the right moment and, and they follow a game day script to, to really add to the ambiance of the game and the experience for the fans and so we're always looking at that we added two new lights this year um, that are a little more higher powered that we can utilize when the lights are on in the arena um, and our other ones are a little older so it's really hard to see them uh, for instance if we score a goal and we we call it party mode where we hit the lights and the those lights are flashing around the other arena to kind of elevate the experience of, of people cheering and in the excitement around um, a bulldog goal um, during the course of the game. And a few other game day preparations that takes place behind the scenes I think are important to hit on is obviously I mentioned before our athletic training staff. Um, so preseason, 
Uh, we work with our ambulance and medical provider to, to drop a contract to have ambulance service at every single game. So our athletic training staff is really important in making sure that we have the right medical coverage. Uh, it's a responsibility of UMD as hosting a hockey game there, uh, whether it's men's or women's program, to have that set up in all our emergency services and our plans in place. Uh, we work with a lot of great partners on campus, um, as well as the arena to have all those plans in place. So, And, and we do some preseason training and, and walkthroughs and tabletop top sessions to, to really make sure people know that if something we had to uh, evacuate the building or a medical emergency happens that we know kind of the chain of command from the deck side of who's going to be communicating directly with myself to then communicate that message to the appropriate parties or if we need to make an announcement or put a message up on the video board. Uh, I think a lot of people don't know the Duluth Police Department, the deck works really closely with them. Uh, just to really talk about traffic flow pre and post game, it's something we've talked about over the years that I think everybody knows if you've been down at Canal Park on a weekend and maybe it's the fall and there's a hockey game and a, a concert at Symphony Hall and a convention and, and anything else going on in Canal that uh, parking and traffic can, is always, um, can always be an issue. Maybe it's Bentleyville, et cetera. Uh, for instance, we have Bentleyville starting up next weekend. And so we're actually dropping the puck on Saturday at five o'clock to try to beat that traffic rush. And so we really look at all that and, and and reach out to the Duluth PD and have reached out to MnDOT in the past to really talk about traffic flow and one-way streets and exits and entrances and keeping uh, street lights on longer. Um, and it's not a perfect science. We can always get better at it, but I, I believe over the last few years, it's gotten a little better and the deck staff has done a great job and has put an emphasis on that communication and some of their staff in the parking lot to, to get people in and get people out as quickly as they possibly can. I'll communicate a lot with our Canal Park businesses and downtown businesses. As I mentioned, the game time for next week, uh, next Saturday's game on the 23rd at five o'clock. Um, so that's something uh, that many fans have not might have noticed this year is all our Saturday games have been at 607 on the men's side uh, with a few five o'clock. And so that's something we've talked about for two or three years and have had a lot of conversations and asked a lot of people of if we make that decision to go up to six o'clock versus seven, how does that affect the arena for one thing? How does it affect our team, but also the other businesses in Canal Park and downtown from traffic to um to the busyness of restaurants and bars pre and post game. And so that's something that we really work on as our, our pre-game pre-planning preparation for the season. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned, Bentleyville of being cognizant of all the other area events that take place down there at AMSO arena and in, in that venue and um, in the deck as a whole, and then communicating with our ticket holders and purchasers. Our ticket office does a great job of emailing out all the ticket purchasers um, each, you know, Wednesday or Thursday heading into the weekend of what do you need to know? Um, you know, digital tickets, uh, giveaways, parking alerts, et cetera, of really trying to be as um, upfront with folks as possible um, because we have six, 7,000 people coming in. We obviously want it to be the best experience possible. And uh, sometimes there's hiccups along the way, but uh, ultimately we hope that people come, have a great time, hopefully see a Bulldog win, and then want to come back again uh, to cheer on the dogs at the arena and, and help support uh, UMD and, and our student athletes in, in those programs. And so that's kind of the end of the slide there. I know that might've been a, a lot of information, but hopefully it was able to kind of take you through a little bit about behind the scenes and game day prep um, and, and what that may look like. Um, and I'll try to stop sharing my screen there and pop back on and I'll kick it back over to Molly and hopefully maybe be able to have some questions that maybe I didn't highlight on or really anything in general that uh, you all that attended today may want to ask. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian, for that thorough uh, tour of Amazon. There's a lot that goes into it. And um, hopefully you all learned a little something today. Um, but now we're going to tr uh, transition to our Q&A of the session. So as a reminder, on the bottom of the screen, there's a little button that says Q&A. And you're able to click, click that and submit a question live here. Um, and hopefully Brian will be able to answer it. But we did have some questions submitted in advance. And so I think what we'll do is we'll start with those and then kind of just transition through other ones as they come. So I think the first one um, that I think is an interesting question, um, how do you ensure that everything is done properly every single time? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, as, as much of the communication as we possibly can do, that's what we try to try to really emphasize. Um, and it definitely is not done perfect every single time, but uh, and there's hiccups along the way, but as much as we can communicate with all parties involved uh, and then do follow up, if there is something that that went wrong, we address it after the game as a group and take notes and 
try to make sure that we rectify that the next time it comes around. But uh, I can tell you any event that I've ever been to over the 500 hockey games um, from start to finish, there's always something that goes wrong <laughs> or takes place um, that happens. So it's never perfect, but we try to be as perfect as possible. Perfect. And just kind of looking at um, the UMD hockey program and game day, how many athletic department staff would you say are working to get this event off the ground? Um, maybe from that Monday through Friday timeline. Yeah. So as mentioned from our admin staff, there's four or five of us that are full-time in different areas that are really instrumental in getting that ready. And then obviously with our men's and women's teams, uh, with their coaching staff and athletic training staff, each, each one has four coaches and an equipment manager, as well as, um, our athletic training staff down there, um, that has, uh, three individuals that are instrumental. And so that's really all of UMD staff that, that does the pre-prep and then on game day, you know, it's that 15 to 20 student workers and a few part-time people that, that attend to, to make it uh, the greatest experiences we possibly can, uh, for those that, uh, purchase a ticket and, and head down to the rink. I mean, kind of on the flip side here, what are some of the unique challenges that you faced um, while hosting, you know, game day experiences at Amsoil? Yeah, we've faced, I think, a lot of unique challenges over the years. Um, I think we've had power go out to the arena. Um, we've had to cancel a game um, with uh, company accidentally cutting the power outside working on a construction project uh, that afternoon. And so we had to go through the afternoon and eventually cancel a game. Uh, we've had 22 inches of snow when a team has been here and still had to play the game. And so I, I don't know if any of those that are attending on this uh, Zoom and webinar were at the game, but we had a couple hundred people that were able to make the game. Um, and we've had lights go out um, or technology fail or we've had to delay the game or, um, you know, obviously we never want to see it, but it may be an injury or we've had situations where people uh, players get injured on the ice and ambulance and et cetera. And so it seems like there's obviously a never ending list of challenges that can take place. Um, I think we've probably seen a lot of them and hopefully um, we don't see significant ones in the future, but uh, it's just being able to adapt um, when you're doing live events. Uh, you always got to be ready for the, un the unexpected thing to happen. And then um, you try to prepare as much as you can. And then it's really just about acting um, and, and trusting the, the preparation that you put forth uh, to communicate the message appropriately. Um, and this question is, uh, this person's curious about um, if there's any noticeable difficulties with utilizing a space that's not fully controlled by the university. Yeah, it, it definitely creates some challenges. Uh, you know, we have a, a great partnership with the deck in the arena, um, and we are a leaseholder, uh, leasee of of that space, and we have a great great team space. But uh, there's definitely challenges when it comes to scheduling um, events, or if there's a concert in town of being displaced uh, for practices, or uh, team space, or if there needs to be upgrades to locker rooms, offices, etc., or just general in the arena items that we would like to see upgraded as, as it gets older. And so it's, it's definitely a challenge of going back and forth and having those conversations of who's, who's in charge of what, who's responsible for these upgrades. And when you don't fully control it, there are some benefits of it, but there's also, um, at the end of the day, you're reliant upon the leadership of the arena to, to really guide, um, what that operation and what that venue looks like moving forward. But, uh, we're really supportive of each other. And I think it's a, it's a great arena for those that have gone to AMSO arena and we're continuing to, to advocate for upgrades. And just, as I mentioned earlier, the video board, et cetera, that can make it even a, a better venue moving forward. And we had a lot of questions coming in, curious about a lot of your favorite things, Brian. And so I think one of the questions that I think is interesting, um, someone is curious about kind of the most memorable event that you've been a part of um, producing at UMD. Yeah, that, uh, that's a good question. Um, most one of the most memorable ones is probably doesn't even involve Amsoil necessarily, but, you know, of being at in 2017 down in the Twin Cities and the men's team won their second national championship was pretty cool uh, to be able to be there. Not a lot of folks in in my role sometimes get to experience a national championship. And so uh, being in that venue um, as part of that was was really, really cool. And, and being on the road with some of our other teams, like our men's basketball program, reaching the Elite Eight a couple of years ago, um, <clears throat> that's more being part of the overall experience. Uh, being at AMSO Arena and producing games in particular and, and um, 
and setting that event up. My very first game uh, is really memorable to me that I ever did um, as a young individual coming in here in 2011, because my very first game was raising a banner, the hockey program's very first banner. And so kind of the pressure of that and having um, to plan that and get that ready uh, was a pretty cool experience uh, to do that. And my very first hockey game ever uh, was to at UMD and at Amsoil was to raise a banner. So you kind of mentioned this a little bit, but is there something that is your absolute favorite part of game day at Amsoil that um, you partake in every game? Yeah, I love it. For me, it's it's really when we kind of start that pregame show and the lights, you hit the lights and they go all the way out. And especially if it's a packed student crowd and it's a big opponent like Minnesota or something and the energy that's in the building. Um, and then we can kind of help amplify that with the video features and the lights I mentioned all the way until the team hits the ice and you go through warm ups uh, or go through announcements of lineups and the different elements that we do um, before we turn lights on and drop the puck. And so it's at 10 minutes before puck drop. Um, it just really gets kind of the the juices and the energy flowing um, in the building, uh, which is kind of my favorite part because everybody's really excited to be there and to, to kind of get things going before they drop the puck, no matter what how the game plays out um, as a whole. Awesome. And I know that there's probably quite a few alumni that are on this call and maybe some of us have attended a game in the past, but there's a question that came in wondering how many student tickets are, are allotted for each game. Yeah. Um, so we, our lower level fits anywhere from 750 to 800 in the bleacher section of the, of the arena. And then um, depending on the game and the crowd size, we'll expand up into the sections above. Uh, we usually try to never um, limit a student ticket. Um, it's important for our students to be able to attend those games. But at a certain point, once we get over a thousand tickets, it's really hard to place individuals into the, the bowl, the lower bowl and upper bowl area. And so we then will sell standing room only tickets to students. But um, I think our largest ever student uh, ticket allotment for a game uh, was over 1300 tickets for a student crowd, uh, which filled uh, the sections above the lower bleacher area. And then the rest of the students who attended were in standing room only area around the arena. I mean, this question is kind of more broadly um, for athletics, Bulldog athletics and student um, athletes, but curious about how UMD is working to remain competitive um, in the NIL name, image, and likeness world. Yeah. Uh, NIL is definitely a, uh, three letter word <laughs> right now. It's, uh, it's ever changing. It's something we've talked about for three years. It's something we're trying to be as competitive as we possibly can. Uh, we started this summer with a, a great partnership with a company called uh, Teamworks and Influencer to provide a, a local exchange and marketplace for our student athletes to connect with businesses uh, to, to take advantage of NIL opportunities. Uh, we created a, a partnership with a group, the 218 Champions Collective, uh, which is an NIL collective, which is separate from our athletic department that is out raising funds from businesses and individuals to to then um, connect and create partnerships with our student athletes, and then our next our next phase is is not off the ground yet, but we're we're hoping in the next few months we'll have an opportunity for student athletes to to be involved in um, you know custom merchandise as far as um, on the front or names on the back of jersey shirts, hats, sweatshirts, etc. And so we're just trying to provide all the the opportunities that are out there and available to our student athletes, um, and and be on pace with maybe what others are doing. And uh, sometimes we can't compete in every space, but at least providing some opportunities and some resources for them to take advantage of their own name, image, and likeness is, is our uh, kind of most important focus right now. Well, kind of on that same note, and this will be our final question here, but if there are folks that would like to support the UMD hockey program, are there ways for them to do that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we love the sport, obviously buying tickets and having season tickets and attending a game. Um, and if you can't, if you have tickets, you can attend getting them to somebody else you can and have that experience. Uh, that's really important to us. Uh, obviously, we have uh, numerous ways with uh, scholarships and uh, fundraising efforts. Um, UMDBulldogs.com slash donate has uh, a flurry of opportunities uh, to support our men's women's hockey program, whether it's facility upgrades, scholarships, um, 
uh, and, and other opportunities that are, that are available. And so anybody that's ever interested can obviously reach out at any time um, to myself or others to get you directed um, to the right individual. But uh, we appreciate everybody's support and and continue to to need more as we go go through the years and and, and items change uh, in the in the NCAA and in the competitive landscape. Awesome. Well, I guess on with that, I just want to thank you, Brian. And for those of you that are not UMD alumni, um, our office alumni relations, we offer these virtual webinars every month. Um, and you can join our mailing list by sending us an email um, and we'll get you added to that. And then also, if there are folks that um, live down in the Twin Cities area, we actually have a women's bulldog hockey watch party happening um, at a bar of their own in Minneapolis, Minnesota tomorrow, November 15th. Um, so you can get more information on our website too, but I just wanted to, to plug that event as well. Um, so once again, thank you so much, Brian, for your time. And thank you all for joining us today. Um, and we hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Go dogs.